Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. So this particular video series is an overview of the topic weather and climate, which is covered in every single GCSE specification to date. So that's including AQA, OCR, WJC, Edexcel and Educast. Now, what I have decided to do is to create worksheets for you to be able to complete alongside watching this video. So if you would also like to complete the lesson activities on the worksheets, I've put a link in the description box below for you to access them. They are completely free and they are designed to help you create a nice set of revision notes for your GCSE examinations. So like I said, Today, we're going to look at the topic weather and climate, and we're going to look at an introduction to weather and climate as an overall topic. So if we start off thinking about what is the difference between weather and climate, and we're going to start off with the term climate, because it is a geographical term you will need to know for your examinations. So when I talk about the word climate, I'm talking about different weather conditions that can be expected in an area over a long period of time. Now, typically that would be a period of time over about 30 years. So we would look at a particular location, for example, London in the UK, and we would record the temperature every single day, as well as the amount of precipitation, so rain, hail, sleet and snow, that London experiences every day for about a 30 year period. We would then take all of that information and we would then work out your average, your typical weather conditions that London experiences in every single month of the year using those recordings. And that would give us the climate of a particular location over that long period of time. And this is why as geographers we know that, for example, the Sahara Desert experiences very high temperatures because its climate has been measured over a long period of time and that has indicated from an average of measuring all those temperatures and precipitation recordings that that is the climate. So when we're thinking about climate, we're talking about over a long period of time. Now in comparison, the term weather is referring to particular conditions that are associated and, and occurring in the atmosphere over a short period of time. So I'm talking on a daily basis. So when you look out the window in the morning and you see that it's raining or it's sunny or it's foggy, that's what we're talking about when we're thinking about the weather. So the weather is over a short period of time. Now these are two GCSE specification words you do need to know. So if you're working on the worksheets, you will notice I have already added them onto your worksheets for you. And as I emphasise to my students, it might be a good idea to highlight these keywords so you can draw attention to them when you are revising using your notes. Or you might decide later on to make some keyword flashcards. So those are the two keywords for this particular topic that we're starting off with looking at today. So let's put our our understanding now of these terms into practice and I've put some statements here on the screen and what you can see is that each of these statements is talking about either weather, typical weather conditions over a short period of time or climate over a long period of time and I want you to use those two definitions of weather and climate that we've just gone through to help you decide if each of these statements, so if they're talking about weather or climate, and you can either write these down or if you're working on the worksheets that are available in the description box below using a link completely free, uh, you can obviously complete this table on that worksheet. So let me just give you one minute to decide which statement is talking about weather and which one's talking about climate.
Okay then, so this would be the moment where I ask my students to pick up a different coloured pen so we can self-assess our answers and check whether we're actually right. So if we start off with the first statement, I think we should move further south where it's warmer. That there is talking about the climate because we know that over a long period of time, the south, which is probably closer proximity to the equator, is going to be that warmer, typical temperature. Now, when we're talking about washing, never drying on a daily basis, that's when we're talking about the weather, the short period of time. The fact that it's a beautiful day in Liverpool, when it is a nice day in Liverpool, that is when we're talking about the weather again, because it's a short period of time. Whereas when we're thinking about December being cold and wet, we're talking about the climate there, because that is your average long period weather conditions that have then associated and, and been put together for the climate. Then we've got a question, where should we go for our skiing holiday this year? Now that again is associated with climate because you're wanting to, to pick a location that is known for it being cold and also having a, a quite a large amount of snow for your skiing holiday. And therefore we need those weather conditions to be quite consistent over a long period of time. So that is climate. And then the last one, there is too much fog to take off now. That would be what an, an aeroplane pilot, for example, will say to another person. And that there we're talking about the weather, because again, it's over a short period of time. So when it comes to this topic then of weather and climate, what you might be asked to complete in your GCSE examinations or even to maybe analyse and use is a climate graph. So a climate graph, is uh, what we would know as an average precipitation and temperature graph, which typically is experienced in a location. And what you can see on the screen here is a climate graph for London in the UK. Now, if we are to just quickly pick apart this climate graph so you understand what the different uh, features are of it, at the bottom um, on the x-axis, we always have our months of our year, nice and separated, so it's nice and evenly spread out. On the left hand side, we would have precipitation and we usually measure that in, in millimetres and precipitation will include any water based vapour that comes out of the atmosphere. So that's rain, hail, sleet and snow and that would be known as precipitation. Now, when it comes to drawing our precipitation recordings on our climate graph, this would be indicated by the bars, which are typically blue, like you can just see that's appeared on the screen here now. Now, if we refer to the uh, right hand axis now, we then have temperature and temperature we usually measure in degrees Celsius and temperature is is indicated by a line on your climate graph. So we usually put all our, our points for each month on the line and then we will join them up like dot to dot to give our temperature recording. And that's why this climate graph and this particular graph has two types of data on it, bars and lines, your bars for precipitation and your line for temperature. So we are going to now practice that skill of drawing a climate graph and I've decided to pick Liverpool as our location in the northwest of England because that is whereabouts my school is located and where I am currently teaching. So I've given you some data on the worksheet as well as on the screen and you are now going to draw a climate graph for Liverpool using this climate graph data. Now I have provided a template for you with graph paper. If you're not using the worksheet, then you can obviously complete it on graph paper yourself. So if you are unsure how to start your climate graph, do not worry because sometimes students need a little bit of help and guidance on how to complete it. So you need to first of all, add in your axis, okay? Your X and Y axis on the left and on the right hand side. Then on the X axis, we need to add in our months of the year and we need to make sure our months of the year are very evenly spaced out and not too squished together because otherwise it can make our climate graph quite difficult to read. Now on the left hand side, we're then going to add in precipitation. So we need to make sure that we also label our left hand Y axis. OK, because obviously we're dealing with two types of data here, precipitation and temperature. So we need to make sure that it is clearly labelled. Now, I've decided to go up in tens for my precipitation from zero to 90. 
because if you look at the data for Liverpool, and I have also included it on the bottom of this screen here, so you can reference it as well. I have looked across my precipitation data and I can see that my, my highest value for precipitation was in October of 90 millimetres. And that is why I have decided to take my, my left hand y axis all the way up to the value of 90 instead of going up to 100 because I don't need to go up to 100 because 90 is my largest figure. Now, at this stage, then we can start to, to draw our data for precipitation onto our graph. And this is where we need to start drawing bars. So what you will end up having, okay, are all your bars on your climate graph that look like this, okay? So I have decided to leave a small gap between each of my bars so that it is easy to see the different months. So I've got my 12 bars here and therefore I can easily pick them out. You might decide to have your bars touching each other and leave no gap in between. That's perfectly fine. You draw whatever is best for you and then easy for you to interpret and read later on. Now, once you have then drawn all your bars for precipitation on, you're then going to go over to the right hand Y axis now and you're going to add in your temperature um, labels. And don't forget, you need to, to add in your axis label here for temperature measured in degrees Celsius, again, so it is easy to read and refer to later on. Now, again, this particular axis, I've decided to go up to 25 because I've looked at my data and I know that 20 is my highest recorded temperature for Liverpool. So I've decided to go up to 25, which isn't technically necessary. You could just go up to 20. And I've decided to go up in fives this time instead of tens so that it is a bit of a bigger difference between my points that I'm about to put on. And again, easier for me to interpret later on. So once you have then added in your uh, right hand Y axis uh, labels, you can then start going ahead and putting your temperature recordings on. So your temperature will be recorded by um, X's or dots and they do get placed in the middle of the month. So if you look at January, for example, you can see that that dot is in the centre of that month. And yes, it is drawn over the bars in this case. And that's perfectly fine, but you just need to make sure that you're using the right hand axis when you're coming to drawing your dots and your line on for temperature. So once you've got all your dots on for temperature, just like I've done, you can join them up dot to dot. Don't uh, um, connect them to your left and right hand axis. It's, it's more of a floaty line, if you like. And then we need to make sure at the end that we give it a nice clear title. So this is a climate graph for Liverpool. And that concludes this very short, brief introduction of uh, weather and climate. And now you have practiced also your skills of a climate graph. So thanks everybody for watching. Can you remember to like the video and subscribe if you found it helpful? Because um, it will give me a lot of feedback as well to know if you are finding these videos useful particularly for those of you that are learning from home. So have a lovely day, everyone. Thank you for watching this video and I will see you next time.